Hello, my beautiful, gorgeous people, and welcome to this mini course. Today, we are starting to work and dive into your confidence, to heal your narcissism and to start applying it and using it as a tool in your reality. Narcissism is one of my personal favorite topics. And uh, when I was traveling, when I was coming to Korea, to Seoul, I was thinking what this country is about. It came to me once I started understanding what the values, what values they hold, what are their national, genetic, ancestral patterns. It all goes to narcissism. And today, on my first day in Seoul, I only got more and more proof of that. A couple of things of why it happens and why Seoul or Koreans have a bigger narcissistic trauma than any other nation and are about this specific topic more than anyone else is because, first of all, they have created, they came up with selfies. Right? And selfie at the end of the day is the originator or uh, the, the original selfie was the story of Narcissus. Narcissus, the mythological creature who found the reflection of himself in the water and could not stop looking at him and he died. That was the story. So this is what we're going to be talking about today is the narcissistic trauma because it goes hand in hand with self-esteem. In Korea as well, and I'm channeling this egregor for you because that is something that they are working on in the last 40 years since the big economic boom that happened to this nation. This is their main egregor. If you think about narcissistic traumas and self-esteem healing, that would be Korea. Today, walking down the streets, I was surprised for the first time in my life, I have seen just outside on the streets tons of mirrors, tons of mirrors. Every second street you turn, every single turn, every street would have a mirror, just a street mirror, just for people to look at themselves, right? And what narcissism is, where it comes from, is a healthy, the narcissistic personality, the narcissistic trait is about a healthy self-esteem. So that is what we are going to start talking today and start healing it for the next seven days. What is, I'm going to hold my phone because uh, I need a good audio for you. So what is self-esteem? Where does it come from? It is common to assume that it comes from the family, just from the family. Whereas there is a genetic or soul predisposition. If you take two identical twins, one of my supervisors had two identical twins. So these twins would grow up in the same conditions. They have the same mother and the same father. However, growing up, one of them is going to take the healthy self-esteem, develop that. The other one, for his sole purposes or for his um, genetic or DNA predisposition, would take and hurt himself on some traumas from the childhood so that growing up, he can work through that and gain the new knowledge for the soul, gain the new necessary bits, the necessary lessons for the soul. So yes, there is a genetic predisposition that has to go with the soul contract or DNA predisposition or DNA combination. But the rest of the self-esteem is developed in the family. We have the mother-father esteem and self-esteem. And we choose ourselves which one we're going to take with us into the adult life. And which of this esteem, the self-esteem, the one that we learn to develop, that narcissistic trait, when we heal ourselves, when we say that we're good, we're great, we're amazing, we are known, we are valued, or we choose to bring the mother and father esteem of us from the childhood just to continue that trauma. So in the next seven days, we're going to be unbreaking or un uh, hindering this mixture, this combination, these patterns that are no longer serving you and getting back to the self-esteem, to the narcissistic trait that is required in a grown-up, in an adult world to uh, succeed in anything that requires society. Because there is a paradox of self-esteem. If we were to be left on an island with nobody else, 
There is no self-esteem. The only thing that is valued there are the skills. You just can't not do something, right? It's like you're going to be sitting on the island without anything to eat, and you would be contemplating if you are a good fisherman or not, or if you're a good hunter or not, or if it's uh, if it's something that was given to you, or if somebody told you one day that you're not a good hunter. You will just do it because the necessity, the value of that, is just in the action. However. When we live in a society, on top of the skills itself, we put together the esteem that either holds us back from not doing something or it pushes, it moves us forward towards the action steps in order to actually gain a specific result, you know, in order to actually gain some kind of result and understanding and movement and uh, achievement in life. But on the island, the esteem is still there. You're still capable of grading of leveling of valuing your work if you are a good fisherman if you're not a good fisherman if you need to adjust or not adjust if you need to uh, get a new spear if you need to work on your targeting skills right but it's not going to be stopping you from actually doing the steps which in life in real life quite often when we have the narcissistic trauma we hold ourselves back from actually going and doing the action steps and taking that step and adjusting, creatively adjusting to the surroundings. Even if something is not working out, even if somebody told us we're not good, we go and we hold ourselves back, right? Our mother or father told us that we cannot achieve something, that we're only good when we are when we do a specific thing. And then we hold it back and we don't go through into our soul mission, into our desires, into our wishes, into something that we want to achieve. But every day, every single day in life, you can stay on that uninhabited island. This is time that you spend with yourself. So one of the good things to start checking what I will ask you today is bring attention and start noticing how do you value yourself when you're on that island, when you are by yourself, when you're at home or at work, how do you serve yourself? Do you walk around the house in old clothes? Do you serve yourself food graciously and with love, something that will heal you, something that will inspire you and give you positive emotions or you just swallow whatever whatever is there do you brush your hair do you wash your hair because how often does one stay at home especially after the covid times we could feel we could sense that narcissistic trauma that so many of us have how hard it is to pull yourself together when nobody is watching when nobody is there to give you value for that when nobody can tell you how beautiful of an outfit you have how great of a hair you you've done how good of a makeup you have today during the covid times how many of you gave up completely and just wore the same old clothes wore no makeup didn't brush for days that is a clear identification of very sick self-esteem and that is also an identification of a narcissistic trauma which says when nobody can see me when I don't see myself through others eyes through the eyes of others then I cannot self-identify good high self-esteem comes from within it's when we from the inside of us can look at us and value us okay highly or not highly with a love with compassion with care but also with realistic input and realistic intake that is high and good self-esteem if you look at the animal world, the sick animal is the sad one, is the one with low self-esteem, is the one who's not brushed, is the one that doesn't look good, that doesn't bring that vitality into uh, its tribe or its pride, right? And hence, he's usually sent out of the society. Same with a human being. When we have low self-esteem, when we don't care for ourselves, when we don't have that self-value developed correctly, when we don't put value into our everyday life and fulfill it, with quality, we will be considered a sick person, sick either physically or mentally as well. Actually, one of the biggest identifications of mental sickness is when a person does not and cannot take care of himself. One of the first signs of depression, of a clinical depression, is when a person does not stop brushing, stops caring what he or she eats, stops taking care of the home, of the apartment, of the clothes. That is the first sign, one of the main signs of clinical depression, of mental illness. So take a look today at your apartment, at your 
your space, whether at work or at home. How cleared it is, how clean it is, how healthy mentally would you evaluate if you saw this space? If you saw somebody who have this space, how on a scale from one to 10 would you evaluate mental health of that person? And I want you to figure that out for yourself because self-esteem comes with self-value and comes with self-respect right? When we learn how to respect ourselves, how to value ourselves, how to create that esteem from based on these two factors. And that is how you spend time with yourself. Healing narcissistic trauma means getting away from self-judgment through the eyes of the others, right? Just like I was mentioning to you why Korea, why in Korea I'm recording this mini course because of the selfies. They created selfies. They have these mirrors. It's really hard for them to create the self-esteem, the self-value without the external image, without the eyes of someone else looking back at you. And this is what we are going to be healing today. In today's exercise, I want to give you three things. Number one, for tomorrow, take a piece of paper and write or draw a letter, letter with 10 steps. And I want you to place yourself there based on three criteria: Me, now, people that are close to me, my relatives, my friends, and my social media presence. Where on the scale from one to 10 would you put these three things on that letter? The second thing I want to give you today is a habit. A habit that is so important to implement if you want to work on your self-esteem, which says, I want to leave the world better than when I came to it. Not for others. I don't want you to confuse it with leaving the world for others. Whenever somebody comes to me and says, I want to help people, I want to help others, I want to take care of the world uh, population problem or plastic problem, whatever, for my kids, for this specific nation, for this country, etc., etc., it's usually bullshit. And it's usually rooted in this narcissistic trauma when we need the approval of our mommy, daddy, uh, aka the society or aka somebody else. So the habit that I want you to start incorporating in your life is I want to leave this world better or leave this place, leave this space better after I came into it than when I got to it. Okay, and I want you to, whatever you do that, tap yourself on the shoulder. Do it for you and not for the others. Whenever I uh, see trash or something, if I feel called to take care of it, to put it back, I know I'm clearing out my space. I do it for me, not for the service people, not for the garbage people, not for the plastic, not for ducks, not for turtles. I do it for me. That is how I am raising my self-esteem and self-value. And that is what we're doing. And the third thing, and this is one of my favorite things overall in this mini course, every morning for the next seven days, you're going to start with a song. I will send it or edit down below a list of my favorite songs. Choose one new song for you to start the day with and just let it go. Let it happen. Start dancing. Every morning you wake up, whether you meditate or not in the morning or do your morning pages, play the song and as it goes, indulge in it. Dance, uh, have fun, enjoy and really, really let your body feel what it feels like to be a part of that song. Okay, that is the first video. That is the first class. I'm so excited that you joined me on this trip to self-confidence, to self-esteem. We are going to do an amazing job together. I promise you it's going to be great. After the seven days, you will heal. You will do more work for your self-esteem, for your narcissistic trauma than you have done in many, many years. So I will see you tomorrow. Don't forget to do the homework. Bye.